It's Wednesday, March 13th, and you're tuned in to the Channel Podcast. I'm Vince. I'm Anthony. And this is the Geek Chic Culture Show, where we talk about all the cool things in the whole wide world. Guess what? What? We're at the end of the winter. The winter is almost behind us. Just one more week, and we will be out of this frigid hell hole. You know that's not true, right? It's absolutely true. <laughs> you know that's not true. What are you talking about? Why? Because this, Why? Is, this is Canadian winter. Why do you lie They're to They're like, hey me? man, check it out. It's springtime, and by spring we mean minus three, sometimes plus two. But still mostly cold. No, it's going to be warm. I have faith. I have faith. I walked the streets today. Your faith is misplaced. I walked. I could have used the underground paths, but I walked the streets because it was worth it. Does it smell like urine? Uh, nope. Ooh, wow. Nope. Nope. No, it's not hot enough for that stuff to, <laughs> to propagate. No. Okay. It's still too cold and windy, so don't worry about it. Okay, okay. Yes, it's another week here in the TNB headquarters. Um, we got no, we got no questions. No, but not by, that I know. Of. But by now, you all, if you're listening to this one, hopefully, I should, should have caught up on all the episodes, or they just skipped it. Yeah, like, they just that. went to this one. Yeah. <laughs> like fuck that noise. So, let's start off. X weeks. X. We don't review, right? Not no, that I know. No, of. we do not. No. Do not. Uh, I will start things off with Go. arguably the biggest trailer of the week. Tell me all about it. Aladdin. Oh, I don't. I've never heard of that before. What Aladdin. It? What's Aladdin? Disney's Aladdin. What is it? Aladdin. Oh, okay. <laughs> Aladdin. Live action Aladdin. So we got our first look at everything. Well, not mm-hmm. first look, but like a good, a good idea of the movie. And I gotta say, I'm feeling it. It looks really good. I'm feeling it. Yeah. Hot Jafar is still weird. I feel like it's a weird choice to make uh, the, was the genie song have like a hip hop beat. Like, I heard, like, trap symbols in the background. I'm like, oh, just because Will Smith is black, you're making this hip-hop, huh? Racist. I feel like it has to be. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Hot Jafar is not, uh, it's, it's weird. I yeah, don't know. it is a little weird. That's, like, like, the one main point I'm, like, feeling off about. But there's, going through this trailer reminds me that there is a lot of stuff I do not remember about Aladdin. Uh, I did forgot that there was an ice portion. Yes. I forgot that there was a giant bird at some point. Uh, there's not or, a giant bird. Yago? Yeah, but he was giant in this trailer. I think it's just perspective. Okay. I don't know if he was big. But he, like, knocked over a roof. Did he? I think so. I think there was a giant bird. Okay, I don't remember Yago getting big, but he could have. Okay. Actually, wait. Did he? Maybe? I don't know. It's, the ending of that movie is a little hazy to me. I just know that Jafar becomes a snake, Aladdin stabs the snake... But then Aladdin gets to the lamb. No, no, he he fo- he coerces uh-huh. Jafar into wishing to become an all powerful genie. Oh, yes. yeah, yes, because he has skill plus ten, or I mean speech level. <laughs> yeah, plus speech 10. speech level hundred. Yeah. So that's how that happens. Uh, but yeah, the movie looks good. Will Smith as Blue Genie. I'm converted. He looks fine. Whatever. Yeah. Like no he looks issues like a, there. He looks like a yeah. CG genie. Yeah. No, no issues there. It is definitely Jafar. Mm-hmm. That's the weird one. That's the one that's throwing me off. But okay, yeah, that was uh, that was the majority of my pick. Is that all your pick? Is that the only one you got? I think I got one more. Okay. E3's dead. I'm sorry, what? E3 is dead. I'm sorry, what? E3 is dead. I just don't believe you. Remember a couple years ago when like Nintendo said, yo, we're not doing the press conference anymore, we're doing yeah, directs? Yeah, we got these directs. Well, Sony has stepped up and they're like, we out. We are out too. Damn. Uh, which leaves Microsoft to to manhandle E3. Because I also believe EA is not doing one. Mm-hmm. Bethesda's up in the air. I don't know. Yo, EA has renamed Microsoft Square to Xbox Plaza. What? Yeah, just ahead, <laughs> just ahead of E3 2019. Whoa. So you can go to Xbox Plaza. Jeez, look at these bleeding edge headlines. I know, but yeah, I know. So the the age of press conferences in the video game world are going. 
They're going bye bye. Yeah. Which is weird because the age of press conferences in the technology oh, space is huge. It's just coming back, right? Like it's coming back. But the yeah. thing is, is that it's not a convention, really. Like CES is a thing, yeah. right? But CES is getting more boring year over year over year. Actually, yeah, you're right. Pre- when you think of press conferences, it is solo shit because they can control the message. You're better. right. It might as well as be. Yeah. Okay. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So, but I think what Sony says they're they're gonna have their own version. Of like a Nintendo. Well, drug? they've been having their uh, their live shows, right? Mm-hmm. With uh, what's his face? What's that guy's name? Yeah. The guy who hosts all the live shows. He's like the CEO. Oh. Of Sony America. Oh, that man. Sean Hayden. Is that his name? Yeah. I hate that guy. You love him. I hate that. He's guy. the best. I hate that guy. But yeah, uh, this makes this makes perfect sense, and. It also saddens me to no end that you'll never that I'll never experience E3 as it was meant to be. as it was meant to be like yeah. unless something happens and they're all like we got to band together and bring back E3. Yeah, sometimes like, I wish I was, I was a little bit older so that I could have gone to E3 in like 1999. Yeah. I got yeah. the advent of the PS2 and the Dreamcast. And you could see that fucking Metal Gear trailer, that yeah. Metal Gear 2 trailer and be like, what the fuck? Yeah. And she was wild. Yeah, but it's that's this is the thing now. It's uh, in the advent of digital media yeah. and being able to directly stream into anybody's home. Mm. Uh, it's this kind of. Are you telling thing, me yeah. that the internet has ruined experiences? I don't know if it's, real life experiences. I don't know if it's ruined them. I think it's just changed them. All right, internet right. has ruined real life experiences. <laughs> Confirmed. There we go. Thank Straight you. Straight out of his mouth. <laughs> Uh, I don't, the thing is, the thing is with the internet is like, it, it does allow everyone to control their message more, whether that be hosting their own events or, uh, giving preferential treat, preferential treatment to social media influencers rather than, uh, quote unquote games journalism. Games journalism. Yeah. Uh, so big sites like GameSpot or IGN, like getting the back seat when, Super Smoke Dog Killer 69 420 is getting the hot new Call of Duty action before anyone else because they can coerce that guy into being like, yo, just say positive shit and we'll give you a sweet gaming chair, right? It costs them peanuts. I was going to say, I would take it one step further. They wouldn't even go there. They they just have their own little media personalities oh they're yeah that's that's fair enough they could right? they could get their own nintendo does that right that's what treehouse exists yeah. they are they're basically they're like a journalism publication that solely exists to hype up only they're the nintendo. new nintendo power yeah so it's kind of if if i were running the company i'd do the same yeah. shit which is which is weird because uh, nintendo recently got rid of their uh partners program yeah where they were taking like what is it like 30 percent of all revenue for any n- sort of nintendo video on social media yeah uh, they recently got rid of that, so I don't know. There's back and forth between it, but hmm. yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily ruining it, but it is definitely changing it. Definitely. And stuff for stuff like E3 was great because it was really cool to get a critical eye. Like people who uh, you feel no games are getting to go, and they're part of this uh, third party, which you kind of believe has no tying to any of these companies, so then give you an honest opinion. Yeah. This is where it gets kind of shady because, mm. like, I don't know what kind of deals are going on with YouTubers in the back end uh, or, like, what they're being paid or if they're being paid to say positive stuff because all they really got to say is that this video is sponsored by mm. and then that's a whole issue. So it's different. It's sad. It's at the end of an era. End of an era. But maybe, who knows? E3 survived one death beforehand when they switch venues and they're like, no one's going to go. Yeah. Maybe they'll come back. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Different when the people who who are the active entertain entertainers Sorry. are gone. Bringing back the Ouya, baby. <sighs> it just means that Microsoft is the lone horse. Yeah. The lone horse. Well, the, uh, Microsoft's been in such a weird position because they took over the throne with the 360. Yeah. Just no argument there. And then PlayStation came back hard with so with the uh, PlayStation 4. Yeah. And it just feels like they've been playing catch up yeah. forever. Yeah. Uh it's it's just like they're trying to cater to a certain type of audience. Like we're still at E3. 
But at this point, if everyone's gone, like, unless they got some sort of sweet deal from the E3 people, like, why? Because <laughs> they can control the mess. They can... E3 could just be Microsoft. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. Uh, that e could be. But then at, at, at what point do you just go, we can do that ourselves and we don't have to pay the E3 people and we can just rent out a green room in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and do whatever we want. You say that, but I think right now E3 still has a name. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Especially since they opened it up to the public. Yeah. And right? if, e if the messaging from E3 is Microsoft, mm -hmm. I think that's... And E3 is still a big enough name to like keep me around on certain websites. Like yeah. I'm a I'm a subscriber to Giant Bomb like for their premium stuff. Yeah. The only reason I'm still around for that stuff is for their uh premium E3 content. Oh, like, I see. That's the only reason I'm still a subscriber on that website. I see, I see. Right? Uh-huh. So, like a lot of exciting stuff comes out of that and it's kind of sad to see everyone just being like peace out bitches. Mhm. Mm but I guess that's what happens when your community is so small. Mm -hmm. And not not saying that the gaming community is small, but the fact that the main people who show up are Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft. Mm -hmm. right? When you only have three major contenders, like, what are you going to do? Unless they mm -hmm. bring back Kensha Hall, and you can see some crazy-ass, like, teledildonic shit. That was ten years ago, man. Yeah, listen. That's where Guitar Hero was born. Kensha Hall was was the birthplace of Guitar Hero. That's where all the cool shit is. And you'll never get to know about it. I think it. it's just a parking lot now, apparently. Mm -hmm. I think they just, like, destroyed that portion of the building. Mm -hmm. Ah, whatever. Nobody nobody listening knows what the fuck Kensha Hall is. <laughs> yeah, that was too long ago. Too long ago. I feel, I feel sad. That's sad. Yeah, those are my picks. Okay. But uh, speaking speaking of video games, where's my, where's my picks? Where is it? All right. Speaking of, of Sony making moves, there is a hot rumor. The hottest of rumors. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is not true. Okay. But <clears throat> it is the hottest of rumors. Um, damn. So some guy at, uh, where is it? Wedbush Securities. I don't even know what that company is. Sure. Got a rumor. Market Watch was reporting that Sony is attempting to buy Take-Two. So if you guys don't know, Take Two makes the biggest games in video games right now. They yeah. make uh, they make Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. They make Red Dead. Uh huh. And that's really all they make more, but that's all you really yeah. need to care about. They make Rockstar Ping Pong. No, yeah. <laughs> no yeah. they don't. Um, that's crazy. <laughs> this is that would be like the biggest acquisition since the Blizzard Activision merger, mm. uh, and it would effectively make Grand Theft Auto Sony exclusive. Would it? What, depending on the I contract. Just, I and just the don't details, know why they would do that. Like depending on the details, like if they wanted to play hardball, they would do that. But also mm -hmm. they could buy out take two, just let them do whatever the fuck they want and just reap the benefits. Right. Mm -hmm. They could just be like, we own you now, but also we know you make money. So have fun. Mm. It's just that you have an extra security blanket, I guess. Mm. Uh, but most likely, if this does happen, you will bare minimum get exclusive content mm. or earlier releases on Sony platforms. Mm. It's a kind of a crazy rumor. I I don't think it's going to happen. Mm. But I just thought it was too interesting to, to not mention. Mm. The other one I got is... You know, what was that hot game on the hot RPG on the PS3 you really liked? Is it Dragon's Dogma? Yeah. Yeah. So Dragon's Dogma. You can tell me what I want to hear. Yeah. You're getting, it's getting an anime, yes. baby. Yes. It's getting a hot new anime. Oh, yes. Made by Netflix. Oh. <laughs> 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 it's getting that sweet, sweet Netflix adaption. Okay. I need to know. How do you feel about a Netflix anime Dragon's Dogma? Well... If it's anything like the Netflix ca ca Castlevania, 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 then I'll be okay. But if it's not, then I don't know what to do. I, no <laughs> I do. don't know. What, what am I going to do with my life? It's over. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, I saw this and I was like super excited right up until it said Netflix. Netflix and I was like, mm, I don't 
don't know anymore. Yeah, I think the details of this actually are that uh, it's not by the Castlevania team. It's by Capcom. The Capcom team. That's even worse, because I think the Capcom team made the Devil May Cry anime, and that fucking sucked. Yes, but... <laughs> I think the Capcom team and the Netflix team are also behind the new Devil May Cry anime. Which is apparently going to be good. Because it's by the Castlevania team. Yeah. So hopefully. Who knows? Also, it's not actually anime, it's CG. So. <laughs> Fuck that. I don't know. <laughs> I just had to save that, that little t- tidbit oh, for. Wow. Mwah, the chef's kiss. Oh, this is the, what happens when you only read headlines. The Parmesan oh. on oh, the spaghetti. Oh, God. Sprinkle that goodness in there. Uh, it's CG. Get fucked. It's not uh, anime. <laughs> I came in for the linguine, but I got the ravioli. No. <laughs> it's that monkey paw uh, wish. Oh, fuck. Oh, I really wish there was a Dragon's Dogma anime. Okay, you can have it. <laughs> Except it's all in Berserk style CG. Get wrecked. <laughs> okay, thanks for ruining my day. No problem. Anytime, baby. Anytime. Right. What's next? Uh. Google has announced that they are, or not announced, but they're rumored to get, has they announced it? Is it announced or rumored? Well, they haven't officially announced anything, but it's been an open secret that they are working yeah. on gaming. Dude, Google is making the Ouya 2. <laughs> it's <laughs> oh, the only man. thing I can imagine that thing is. So Google is going to make a... Uh, a, a console apparently mm. so they recently hired jade raymond mm. of assassin's creed 2 fame we oui, we oui. uh, yes it's the best one yeah. and she is now the vp of vig games yeah. at uh at google and yeah. she is heading up this project to make a google game machine yeah she is uh with it for so so long being a three person uh battlefield pretty much for for console games do you think this do you think google has what it takes to bring back the console wars yes but not immediately i don't think based do you, on google's vision for mm-hmm. the future i don't think it can happen until 5g's a reality I can see that. I just don't think the infrastructure is there, but once it is, I think they'll be a mainstay player. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's Google's strength, right? Like being in the internet, being connected, and all the services they Stealing supply information over. Yeah, exactly. Selling it to other people. Well, without that's your permission. that's Google. <laughs> that's man. Google, baby. What do you think G O O G L stands <laughs> for? <laughs> Global sh- oogling. <laughs> Global oogling. God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> uh, that's great. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Google's making a machine that plays video games, apparently. Yeah. And it's not a phone. So, cool. I mean, hey. Uh, and then the last one I want to talk about is the new Yakuza team's game, Judgment, Yeah, has been pulled off of uh japanese shelves yes not because it's too hot not because it's too sultry no not because it's sold out no it, yeah right <laughs> it is because that the lead actor voice actor in the game was caught doing cocaine in japan sure was and the thing is is like you might be hearing this as like canadians or americans i mean like so in japan it's a huge deal <laughs> it's a huge deal uh, getting caught with any sort of illicit substance in Japan is insanely illegal. Like, mm-hmm. not even just, like, a little illegal. Like, it's very illegal. Mm-hmm. And uh, when those pictures and videos surface, it, surface, they're like, shit, well, pull all this shit off. Uh, the thing is, is it's still available in Hong Kong and other Asian regions, so they haven't pulled it off there. Uh, but also, they haven't mentioned if this is going to be an issue for the North American... Eh. North American release, which is scheduled for August, I believe. Oh, is it that far away? Yeah, it's it's pretty far away. Oh, the thing is, is okay. like changing, <laughs> changing a, a a whole actor and a game's worth of voice dialogue is not an easy process. So yeah. I don't know if they would go that far. Uh, but the only thing this has uh, mm-hmm. made. Where, are you on the? Are you on your PlayStation right now? Yes, I am. Oh my god. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, the only thing uh, I'm a little bit 
concerned about is that it's going to delay it until next year so they can or they're just going to delete the fucking japanese voice acting it's going to be only english voice acting which would suck but yeah but you know like you know whatever well, what are you gonna do <sighs> But yeah, those are those are my picks. Those are my picks. Mm. Uh, I, I also want to touch upon this. This happened last week, but uh, PlayStation released an app, iOS only right now, mm-hmm. that basically lets you remote play to your PlayStation from your phone, your iOS device. Yeah. So your iPad. And I have to say, it's pretty fucking cool. It's really cool. I tried it out on my PC recently, yeah. and that's really fucking cool. Yeah. Um, I heard you can hook up a gamepad to it. Yeah, you can Bluetooth your controller to your phone. Yeah, and do it that I do way. Do it that way. Yeah. Um, that's so sick. I kind of want to get an iPad. Huh? Like a really pro level iPad. I can see that. Yeah. And set it up at work. And play RPGs. <laughs> 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 Who's using all this company bandwidth? <laughs> why is it going? Why is it going to this guy's house? What the fuck? Yeah, like. It's pretty cool. Um, this is what you need 5G for. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> so you can play Apex on your phone. I know, right? Fuck PS Now, right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It's cool. It's, it's really cool. It's pretty cool, yeah. That, that's what I wanted to talk about. I remember using Remote Play on my PSP and a little bit on my Vita. Yeah. But it wasn't as smooth as what I've seen on the iOS. Yeah. Yeah. For it, sure. This is definitely a next step. Yeah. I'm also running the 10s, so I don't know how it runs on a lesser device. Okay. Um, I'll try it on my other iPhone. But we'll Are you see. saying you're too rich for to to have those lesser devices? You too too bougie? Yeah, man, I am. Are you fucking for real? <laughs> you you checking checking out this hot new technology, and you're like, you know what I need to play? <laughs> An upresed version of a game from 2007. I just I gotta know. Uh, I gotta know, man. You're playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remake. Okay, guys, guys, so you know, Vince right now <laughs> is looking at his phone, playing Modern Warfare Remastered off his phone. His PlayStation is upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> it's this here. Is, this is incredible. The, I love technology. I can't believe you're doing this right now. Wow, what's wrong? <laughs> In the middle of the show. I just, I needed to know. Go, I... go into the firing range. Let's see what's up. Okay. Uh... This is, I mean, Are you picking the M16 Red Dot site? What's going on here? Th- oh. This is where I wish it was like a video podcast and we could have like picture in picture. Yeah, I know. Uh, how do you do it again? Is it start? Dude, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So you can go around. Oh. Oh, there's no dual, There's no analog sticks? Oh, shit. Where's the analog? Oh, wait, no. There it is. Oh, good no. luck. You gotta claw <laughs> that shit. Bring back the claw from Monster Hunter. It's doable. I just don't believe you. <laughs> I, I'm looking at you right now. It's not. It's definitely not. Listen, but you gotta admit the response is pretty good. It's pretty decent, but also hook up a Bluetooth controller. <laughs> I saw you looking at the ceiling and then at the ground and then at the ceiling again. Maybe, maybe an online first-person shooter isn't what I should be playing. <laughs> maybe like a turn-based RPG. Yeah. You know, this whole time I was thinking that my Switch would become my new like. Now online. your phone is your new game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because now I just got to bring a controller, right? Well, and I guess a battery bank. It's going to eat your fucking battery all day. And it's like a thousand gig data plan to stream all that <laughs> shit. We live in Canada, my dude. Oh, that's okay. Maybe this is how I'll beat Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> you know what? You could probably do it. It's not that hard of a game. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Very cool. This is ridiculous. This is awesome. Welcome to the future. All right. And I think, when we started this podcast, <laughs> I would have never thought that this would be our future. Yeah. What the fuck? It's great. Uh, hopefully, this app comes to Android devices, so you mm-hmm. all could live in the it, live in the now. Yeah. Because I know for some reason, I don't know why it's only iOS. Hmm. It seems strange. Because you can't even have it on your Sony phones. Yeah. So. uh... We going into weeks? We are. Are we going into weeks? We'll do the other one at the end. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll go into weeks. I had a short week. Did you? Yeah. Let me know. I'm playing a lot of Apex still. I saw. I'm fucking hooked, baby. That's a good game. I'm hooked on good Apex. Game. It's a good game. You're so, one, yeah, one of the kids now. Yeah. New. Uh, my new go-to weapon. Yeah. Is a risky move. It's a risky move. It's the Prowler. Oh, but you need select fire. But I need that oh, select fire, baby. No. I need it. I need that select fire. Oh, or, no. or the devotion. Oh, really? But I need that turbocharger. <laughs> <laughs> 
So basically, whenever I see a select fire or a yeah. turbocharger, I just, just pick it up it? and hold it. Yeah. And I'm just like, where's the prowler? Where's the devotion? Where's the prowler? Where's the devotion? But I am getting used to the peacemaker. That thing is a beast, even post nerf. Um, also, I got my hands on the golden guns finally. Oh, which one? The mastiff? Both of them. Oh, the Kraber. Yeah, I got. I got. First off, I got my hands <clears throat> on the Kraber. That's a beast of a gun. That is a beast of. A, I headshot some guy just down yeah. immediately. Get yeah. fucked. Yeah. But they the, just disappear. But the gun that puts in work, baby, yeah. is the Mastiff. Yeah. That gun is no joke. But it, it, it also has surprising range. Yeah, it's very accurate. Yeah, like it's... It's like it shoots like a, not like a, a, a spread, but like a flat disc. Yeah. Like it's like you're shooting a destructo disc at yeah. somebody, yeah. right? It's good. I was uh oh, it was one on one in a <clears throat> oh you had it in one on one I had it in one on one baby and this guy came up at me and he's all like bitch I got you I got my R ninety nine I'm like please please jump off headshot Dunzo I'm the champion wow. feels good wow um so yeah last week I was talking about how I have no wins yeah this week I'm coming back I got like seven. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> I got like I got like seven or eight. Yeah. A uh, couple of those are solo. A couple of those are with a full squad. But baby, once you get that win, like you get the itch. You're yeah. like, I need it. You're I like, need, it, need again it again and again and again. <laughs> yeah. It's uh yeah, that's an addicting game. It is good. I can't believe it's free. I can't believe it's free. What the fuck? It's so good. It's amazing to see how far that team has come. Yeah, and the thing is, is like it's respawn. Yeah. So I've seen like the founders pack and stuff like that. Yeah. Like. I'm thinking about it because I don't feel bad like giving them it's money. It's like, what, 30 bucks, 40 bucks? Yeah, it's 40 bucks Canadian. Oh, I think 30, 30 bucks American. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I think it's 40 bucks Amer- uh, Canadian. <clears throat> uh, you get like 2,000 Apex coins or whatever, a bunch of skins or whatever. But yeah. the thing is, is like, this is Respawn. They have been making great games since the one you were just playing, Modern Warfare. Yeah, the, the one original. I'm going to be talking about. The one you're going to be talking about. Yeah. To be talking about. yeah. Um, and... Titanfall 2 is my favorite first person multiplayer. Yeah, it is. Just straight up. You're right. right? I like I love Apex, yeah. but boy howdy do I love Titanfall 2. Well, first of all, they got mechs. They got A, they got mechs. B, wall running yeah. is no joke. Double jump. Imagine if also double jump. Imagine if everyone could have Bangalore's speed and, while wall running and Pathfinder's hook. And Pathfinder's hook. Just think of yeah, combining Bangalore <laughs> and Pathfinder into one character, yeah. right? <laughs> Like, that is a good fucking game. It's just, it's unfortunate that people don't like robots. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is true. The thing is, oh, here's the thing. I remember, uh, I think it was last year, maybe two years ago, I had a family party at my house. Yeah. And one of my cousins came over and he's like, oh, Anthony, what have you been playing? I'm like, I'm been playing Titanfall. Yeah. And he's like, what the fuck is that? I'm like, dude, you haven't played Titanfall? This is the new Call of Duty. And he was a Call of Duty head. And he's yeah. like, no way, whatever. So I showed him. And he's like, all right, that looks pretty cool. And I let him, I let him get a handle on it. And he's like holy shit this is better than call of duty i'm like yeah. damn fucking straight it is this yeah. game's amazing yeah just the whole introduction of grunts like npcs and multiplayer so you don't feel like a total d-bag yeah. not contributing like it's such a smart move yeah right oh there are things in two that they changed i didn't like like hack knife hack oh. Hackknife was the best. Hackknife is very cool. <laughs> yeah. It's a knife that hacks. Yeah. Like, that's the best. That's the best idea. You turned on turrets. You got some grunts for your... You got... Yeah, you find a specter. Yeah. Just, kum, kum, yeah, you had a personal entourage. Yeah. I don't know why they took it out. It was too cool. They couldn't. <laughs> oh, okay. They couldn't handle it. They didn't know how to up, right. they didn't know how to up the ante. All right. What, a hack sword? <laughs> hack axe? Oh, I guess so. God, what a good game. It's such a good game. But yeah, so Apex, I'm playing a lot of Apex. Uh, the thing I think that has been helping me win is I'm playing different characters. So normally I play Pathfinder, but what I learned is that their hitboxes on all the characters aren't the same. Uh, their speed is the same, but their hitbox is not. Yeah. So people like uh, Gibraltar, Pathfinder, Caustic, bigger characters, they have bigger, Easy to hit. Hit, bigger hitboxes, but they don't have more life. Nah. So... You're just at a strict disadvantage. Yeah. So what I've been doing is I've been playing Bangalore and I've been playing, uh, what's her face? Lifeline? No, Ghost Lady. Wraith. Wraith. She's got the smallest hitbox. She's got the small. Listen, I know. Because when I play Wraith, these mofos cannot hit me. Yeah. Right? Also, just her passive. All right, people would probably argue that Bangalore's is better. 
But I love Wraith's passive. Just to let you know. Just like they're aiming at you. And yeah. it's like, what the fuck? Like you immediately know you're in danger. Yeah. You, you can turn just fucking invisible. Yeah. It's just good. It's just super good. Yeah. Right? Uh I did unlock Caustic. Uh I like his whole poison barrels majigger going on because it slows down enemies and yeah. stuff like that. But he's really only useful inside buildings. Yeah. Uh, I have done some clever shit by like Oh, my teammates are down. Block both doors with caustic barrels, and then revive. But and by the time they kick down the door, it's <clears> too late. Yeah, and a lot of people still don't know how to break doors. Like they think it's just grenades, but you can kick them down, right? Just run. Just just run. Just run and kick. That's all you <laughs> got to do, baby. Uh, but yeah, I'm having a, I'm having a great time. I'm not good enough to where I can like drop in hot no. with like twenty other squads yeah, and just be like, tough. let's go. Yeah. Um, but. Usually, if I start either with like maybe one or two, or <clears throat> with by myself in a squad, uh, I can I can hold my own. Usually, I'm I'm ranking like top ten, so it it feels good playing on PC. Those guys are no good. <laughs> yeah. I did though have my favorite win, uh, my last game, <coughs> which is I became the champion because the ring killed everybody. <laughs> yeah, someone was dumb enough to stay outside the ring. So what happened is that uh, there were two squads left. Uh, my friend had gone to revive me at the revive station and the, as I was being revived, the ring was closing oh, Okay. and I had no gun. Yeah. So he dropped the havoc for me, but I couldn't pick it up in time. And since the last ring just murders you, I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to run. Yeah. And I just pulled some hardcore parkour <clears throat> and jumped, uh... slid, jumped over a bunch of stuff. And while they were all fighting in the ring, I got to the next zone. And so uh, what happened was I was chilling. I got a hot Mozambique. I was like, I got this. I'm going to take out this squad. And all of a sudden I turn around to the ring and the one guy running dies in <laughs> front of like safe haven. It's just like, you are the champion. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, that's so stupid. Wow. Yeah. It was very cool. Good for you. Yeah. There's a lot of cool ways <laughs> to win and play in that game. Having, yeah. having a great time. It's a good game. Uh, but the other thing I did is I saw Captain Marvel. You like it? It's okay. Okay. So I won't go into the spoilers. Yeah. But this movie, hey, you know the Marvel movie formula? Yeah. It's that. Mm. Uh, they don't really add a lot. <clears throat> the the thing, my, my thing is, is, um, they really, I, I, they really try and drive home, uh, the the whole plot twist that's gonna happen mm -hmm. or, or whatever the because every marvel movie has this it's like you think one thing and then it's gonna be another thing right mm -hmm. um but because of previous movies you already know what's gonna happen and it's almost like this movie has no stakes yeah like absolutely zero stakes yeah the other thing is that uh captain marvel is so strong that she has the Superman problem, which is it's yeah. fucking boring, <clears throat> right? It's like, who's going to touch you? Nobody, right? Uh, and then there's a, a lot of other stuff. So obviously with this movie, there's been a lot of controversy around like people hating on it before it's even coming out, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, they, they do really play up the whole girl power portion of this movie. Obviously, I can't relate to that. But also, I think it was done pretty poorly mm -hmm. because a lot of the times she doesn't come off as strong independent or confident she kind of just comes off as an asshole with powers mm -hmm. uh there, there's a scene i believe it's in one of the trailers where she uses her hand blast to blow up a jukebox yeah and in that in the context of that scene that action is completely douchey oh. like she just seems like a chad mm -hmm. right just total asshole like she <clears throat> knows she's powerful but also it doesn't make her likable, mm. right? And maybe that's the point they're trying to get across, that she's just this bad chick who doesn't care and she can do what she wants, right? She is a fighter pilot. She is a fighter pilot. Listen, there is no shortage of Top Gun references in this fucking movie. I bet. But also there's a lot of ham-fisted, just like, people told me I couldn't do it because I was a girl, but they're never convincing. It's always like the most cartoonish caricature mm. of a person being like, you can't fly this jet. 
Cause you got a vagina, and it's like, <laughs> dude, what? Like, fucking relax over here, right? Like, I just don't believe that person exists, and I'm sure they do. Yeah. But in again, in the context of this movie, it doesn't really play off very cleverly because I know that they can do that character very well. Like they, they do it with other female characters in this in this uh, franchise. Like, look at all the female characters in Black Panther. Like, they're fucking badass, right? Um. Yeah. This whole this whole movie it follows the formula to a T. Uh, they retroactively make her the most important character in the whole series. Um, and really, it's just, I don't know, it's fine. It's okay. Like, all you really need to know from this movie is that she's going to be in the last one. Like, that's really... That Superman exists. Yeah, Superman exists to solve all your problems. She's going to be in the last movie. Yeah, like, know. that's really all you need. Yeah. But it's if you want to complete the watching all of the MCU stuff, yeah. right? Like, it's not a bad movie, but it's definitely, like, it's just okay. Like, it's kind of how I felt about uh, the second Ant-Man. Mm. Like, it's fine. Mm. It's okay. It exists, I guess. Okay. Yeah. It's 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 a it's a high-budget action, action-packed thriller. I, oh, I will say, though, the, um, <clears throat> this movie, in certain scenes, not all of them, really does suffer from jump cuts during fight scenes. There is one scene, I think it's the very first fight scene or the second, um, where there are so many, the, the the fight takes place in a really tight corridor and there are so many cuts in this one fight that I actually have no clue what happened. Oh. I just, I saw the fight start, I saw a bunch of cuts in rapid succession and then the enemy was on the ground. I have, oh. I have no clue what happened in that sequence. Like, I cannot remember a movie where I watched a fighting scene and I cannot recall why that person lost. Good to know. Like, I just, I don't know what happened straight mm. up. It's weird. Mm. I don't know. Mm. That was just like one weird. Also, the fact that uh, they have a Street Fighter 2 cabinet in a bar in one of the scenes. But it's running off of an LCD monitor. Yeah. But it's in the 90s. Oh. Fuck that. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, and then I guess, I guess the last one is... Uh, the the music they choose mm -hmm. for this uh, they really try and push a Guardians of the Galaxy type feel, but where what's his name? I want it's not Pym because that's the Ant Man guy, Star Lord. Because where's yeah. where's Star Lord? Peter Quill. <clears throat> where Star Lord and Peter Quill have a, a connection to the music they're playing because it's like his mom's playlist and yeah. all this stuff. This is just like music kind of coming out of the ether. Mm -hmm. Like they'll be fighting in some place that's like not even remotely Earth. And like no doubt plays, and you're like, what? What's happening right now? Like it's not an original score, and and the music choice is obviously to uh, not only just be like remember the '90s, but to kind of drive home the single female lawyer aspect of this movie. Uh -huh. um, but it just seems kind of ham fisted. I don't know. It just seems weird. I don't know. I, I think so. That's how all movies are: random music plays. Yeah, and it's also weird in those ones too. <laughs> you find that weird? A little bit, yeah. When it's just like they're, when they play like a really well-known licensed song, yeah, and it just comes out of the ether. I always feel that's a little oh, weird. Okay, it's kind of just a movie general movie rule for me. Oh, okay. like uh, unless like you don't like it when it's like a montage breaks out and like, but see that's a montage. That's different. That's showing that's showing uh, 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 passage of time, right? Yeah. Where if it's just like I don't know. Imagine if it was fucking Fast and the Furious. Or even in Thor, when they just start playing the fucking Valhalla theme. Yeah. Or, or sorry, um, that Led Zeppelin song. At the end? Yeah, at the yeah. end. Like, I don't think that's cool. I think that's kind of weird. Mm, I don't like, think it's cool. Yeah, I just think it's, I don't know. I wish, like, they at least would go out of your way to be, like, the music. You don't like it when they do it in Tokyo Drift, when they just have random songs coming out? That's so dumb, though. That's exactly it's what so, it is. It's different. No, it's, it's the same. So dude, I it's the same I can shit. I can imagine that some dude, he doesn't race, but his car is just a subwoofer. No, <laughs> that's just, that's part of a movie. Yeah, it's dumb. Like, don't you feel it like when rock music starts playing and Devil May Cry and you're just like, what the fuck? Yo, but he hits the jukebox and he goes, this party's getting crazy. Not all the time. <laughs> Not all the time. They just play, like it happens in all video games. Yeah. That's a weird yeah. complaint. It, it's just, for some reason, when it's when it's in movies, not Tokyo Drift. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When it's in movies, not Tokyo Drift, it is a little weird. Like I just don't. Okay. I don't like. 
If that's how you feel, that's how you feel. Yeah, that's I how just, I feel. I just think it's a weird complaint yeah. in movies in general, but okay. Yo, but this party's getting crazy. No. So yeah, it's it's a fine movie. It's not bad. Like I didn't regret seeing it, but it's it's okay. It's fine. Okay. It's a Marvel movie. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Cool. Um that's it. That's, cool. my, that's my week. It's been pretty chill. So you've been playing Respawn's latest game. I've been playing their first game. Hot damn. Back when they were known as Infinity Ward. Yeah. Uh, I've been playing the remaster of Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Although the remaster is called Call of Duty Modern Warfare. They took out yeah. the 4. They took out the 4. I feel a little upset. Yeah. That, that's a nerf. That's a yeah. strict nerf right there. Yeah, like, why would you take out the 4? They nerfed the title card, which is an odd move. Yeah. <laughs> so... It's weird. They up like they upscaled the textures. They upscaled the graphics. They had loot boxes. Yeah, but when I look at the game, it looks it's it's that effect of like, oh no, this is how I remember it. Yeah, 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 yeah. totally. It's like when you play the 3DS Zelda games. Yeah, and you're like, like this no, is how no. I remember it. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, no, it's not. It not. looks this good. Yeah, of course it does. No, it doesn't. <laughs> yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Well, my mind said it did. <laughs> um, but it's so weird going back. What is it? Twelve years? Because mm-hmm. um. Even though it looks like a modern game, it definitely doesn't play like, especially coming off of Apex, mm-hmm. where things just feel so refined. Yep. Call of Duty 4 does not. Yo, do you like turning while sprinting? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I know. I was like, what the hell? Even like the jumping feels off. It's like you, well, it's like you're jumping with army equipment, right? Yeah. Like you, you don't jump. It's just like a tiny hop. Yeah. Like... Aiming and just, like just the feel of aiming definitely feels more precise, but at the same time a little more janky. Yeah, but, but also using that red dot stopping. Pad. Listen, man, but I totally f- I forgot M sixteen red dot existed, but it exists. It does, and they did not nerf it. Oh baby, and it is still a fucking machine. Three shots to the chest and you're done. I know what. How could they? Say, how who proved that? <laughs> like it, some some game some game tester like all the all the QA guys were yeah. just like, all right, nobody fucking tell anybody about the fucking red dot site. All right, I want to bring that shit back. <laughs> yeah, like it's insane. I can't like I'm so happy that they didn't really nerf anything about the the core gameplay. Um. All the maps are coming back to me. It's so weird. Like, I, I totally... Ac- I thought I was in this mentality where I accepted that, like, okay, I'm not good at these games anymore. Like, I, I'm i I'm mediocre at best now. No, it's because you, you didn't have that, <laughs> yeah. that red dot sight. But, man, maybe. it's it's so weird. It's like riding a bike. It's like, no, you don't forget. You don't forget. <laughs> You've just been playing the wrong games, yeah. maybe? And then it, it hit me. Like, you know what? No, 2007 winter. I was working at a movie theater. Uh... I, I, I think I wasn't, I wasn't in school that year or something. Yeah. And I played this game solid. Well, that was... Uh, I, saw, I saw a really good tweet recently, which was uh, some guy, he tried to play Fortnite. Yeah. And he was talking about how, like, so many people are so good. Like, if you yeah. if you can't kill a guy in two shots, you're they call you an idiot. Yeah. If you cannot build a skyscraper in, like, 0.5 seconds... Uh, they fucking call you a scrub. Yeah. Like unless you're playing Fortnite part time as your part time yeah. job. Yeah. Like you're not gonna get anywhere in that yeah, game, that's right? True. And I think that's why I, I that was the last time I was able to be so f- hyper focused on the game. Yep. Um, Overwatch has come close, but still far away. Uh, but I think a lot of it comes down to, and I think it's it's kind of why I like Overwatch. Like the game is so they're so limited in options. I remember, I think that's why I stopped off on Modern Warfare 2. They introduced so many more aspects in terms of guns and attachments and abilities that there's just so much more I had to manage in my head. Yeah. And that's why it became harder for me. Mm -hmm. But Modern Warfare, there was just enough I needed to worry about where I was like, I could handle everything. It's the same reason I stopped playing sports games. Yeah. It's just that they got too sim eventually or they came with too much options and I just don't give a shit. Yeah. I just want to play it, be Tiger Woods and hit a ball that's... DMX music is playing. <clears throat> yeah, but it feels good. Like I don't know if I'm gonna stick with it for very long, but it's whatever. I just need to pick it up. Whenever I feel good, if I lose at another game, I'll, I'll put this one back in and be like, ah, yes, no, I am worthy. I'm good. Mm-hmm. So it's a. It's... I saw you get that 6.0 kill streak. Yeah. You or mean, sorry, KDA. Yeah, man. Six point KDA, and then in the next game, <laughs> zero point six KDA. To be fair, I was trying to see if the glitches still work on that map, <laughs> but. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and get those glitches to work again. I want to see if they're go private match. Dude. Yeah, I'm gonna private do it. Match. I'm gonna do it. Um, and I think it includes the the map packs. It does. It includes all the map packs. Yeah. Also, best feature, LAN. 
Well, yeah. You, you want to land party this baby up. I forgot you could split screen this game. Yeah. You wow. could split screen it or or land party. Why not both? Why not? In, <laughs> indubitably, sir. I see you are a man of culture as well. I know. Um, the only thing they did, so they added loot boxes, but the thing that they did change, and I haven't experienced it yet, is they added more guns. Yeah. What? <clears throat> what? And they're like future tech guns. Like, they're not from modern yeah. warfare. They're clearly from... Infinity War. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, what the F? So I don't know how that changes the balance of the game. Because you haven't unlocked them yet. Exactly. But I know I got my M16 Red Dot. I'll be okay. Yeah. I recently played it at TJ's. <clears throat> I'm currently downloading on my PlayStation. Yeah. But uh, I, I want to play this more. This <laughs> this could be our squad game. This is a... Yeah. This, this could be, let's roll up on these fucking dorks. So I think that's what's great. A lot of the kids playing today have never played this before. Yeah. And so they just don't know the beauty of... M16, M16 Red, Red Dot? Dot and stopping power? They yeah, because everybody come up against it like, yo, I got that AK, got that M4. Yeah, full auto, get out of here. I know, I know. Dumb. I saw one guy, though, bringing back the quick scope. <laughs> oh, I know. That guy was no joke. With the with the intro level sniper? Yeah. yeah. The bolt action? Yeah. yeah. It's crushing it. Ah, jeez. Jeez, jeez, jeez. I love that game. Uh, so, yeah, that's good. All, like, all of our younger listeners just like, fucking old people. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Good thing it's free, man. I know, right? Uh, the other game I played was um, I tried the demo for Damon X Machina. Yes, that game is really interesting. Yeah, <clears throat> that's uh, I could see myself getting into that game, v- like if that's the only game I had. Mm-hmm. Like, there's there seems to be a lot going on with that. It's like an armored core meets. I don't want to say it's as fluid as Zone of the Enders, mm-hmm. but you you sort of get that. Especially with the lock-ons and Mixed whatnot. With m- m- monster hunt. Yeah. And then you could jump out of your mech. Yeah. When that happened, I thought, oh no. This is the game for me. Yeah, yeah. baby. Yeah, and you had character creation. I'm like, oh, this game is really cool. That's a good pretty good. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Um, I know, uh, I know, like, Iceborne's coming out soon. But, like, hey. Like, <laughs> in the interim, like, we yeah. should all play Damon X Machina. Yeah, when's that game come out? I don't know, actually. Let me check. But, no, it's pretty cool. It's about mechs. And you're fighting stuff, and you salvage pieces. I don't know. If you like mechs, and you like building and customizing your mech to go to war and fight shit, then do it. It it still just says 2019. Okay. It doesn't have an well, exact release date. Yeah, no, it's pretty cool. It's a, it's a good game. And then I watched a documentary series called Formula One Drive to Survive. Okay. So this is based Formula One Battle Royale. Yeah, it's basically <laughs> it's based off of last season Formula One, so to the twenty eighteen season, uh, and it's basically like an in depth look at everything that goes on in Formula One, like behind the scenes. Yep. Okay. They have, that, they have full access to everything, except two teams did not want to participate in this documentary. Who? Mercedes, of course, the- and Ferrari. Of- Okay, that makes sense. So the two biggest teams, the two biggest teams, the thing that the whole season hinged on, the big title battle, is kind of non-existent in this documentary. Yo, but what's happening in Force India? You will find out. Okay, you will find out. Um, so at first, when I heard that, I thought that was a little weird, um, because I mean, obviously, I that's what I want to know about most. Yeah. I want to know what the drivers are thinking throughout the season. I want to know what's going through their heads. Like, I need I need questions answered. Why did Sebastian crash in Germany? Mm-hmm. You know, like why? Why did he have such a fast car? But why did he? Why did he drop the ball so many times? Mm-hmm. I, I need to know. But we won't get he those got an- paid. We won't get those answers. We won't get those answers. Got paid to lose. I hope that's the answer. <laughs> I hope that's the answer. Uh, but you see everything else, and if if you guys don't know, like uh, Formula One is like about racing cars, but this documentary does an excellent job as to why i really enjoy the sport and it almost doesn't at all focus on the racing corporate espionage it's basically all the politics and the kind of like driver drama that's happening behind the scenes Mm -hmm. so if you just want all that juicy drama that's all this is (laughs) that's all it is are you saying that uh formula (laughs) one is like modern day kardashians for men kind of okay it's it's pretty cold because they're like dealing with like millions of dollars and they're just like, hmm, whatever. He's like, got no money now, bitch. bitch. LOL. 
Okay. Yeah, it's like, how are you going to afford to upgrade your engine when you bought our driver? <laughs> All according to <laughs> Keikaku. <laughs> like... Yeah, it's... Uh, That's some anime bullshit right there. Man, like, they say some savage shit to each other. It's 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 pretty good, though. Uh, it's ten episodes. Each episode ranges from half an hour to about 40 minutes, mm-hmm. so... Not too much of an investment. I'm on episode, I think, 9 of 10. So I'm almost done it. Uh, I wanted to complete it. But yeah, no, it's good. It, it's weird. Even though Mercedes and Ferrari aren't part of it, they do show them throughout the series. And it's probably the thing that links the story together. Okay. Because like, in the background, you always hear about the big championship battle and what's oh, yeah, happening. what's going on. And... Yeah. Okay. Because like, it, it progresses throughout the season, like chronologically, race by race, to see what's going on and who's doing what where. And uh Yeah. Needless to say, I'm excited for Formula 1 to start because the season opens this weekend in Australia. So you said it's a documentary series. Yeah. So how many episodes? Ten. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah. It's like ten. We'll, we'll say average is 40 minutes. So, hmm. yeah. Hmm. It's uh, it's pretty cool. It's It's actually really cool. Like, you learn... There's a lot of things that I've never seen anywhere else that they have. And that's probably because they got exclusive rights to go behind the scenes it's been uh it's been slow at work maybe i'll check it out <laughs> it's been very slow yeah, yeah so yeah that's what i did so that was more or less uh my week but normally here is where we would end the show we would but uh hot off the press we got a question paul Chu to chew on yes 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 the thing is facebook has been down all day yeah, I've been trying to post sweet Instagram stories, and that's down too. Yep. Well, they are the same company. Uh, so, Paul just wrote in and said, listen, I've been trying to write you all day, uh, but I got it now. So, here we go. All right. Paul Chewerton, we live in a very sensitive world. Now. Oh, wow. This question is going to be <laughs> thought-provoking. Assuming Canada is as bad as it is in the States. It's worse. To that end, for each of you personally... Which happens more frequently? Do you actually find yourself getting offended by things, or do you see things that should offend you? Hmm. Hmm. On the other side of it, for all the SJWs and keyboard warriors out there, what percentage of them do you think are actually offended by the things, and what percentage of them are just running with something that should offend them and actually doesn't? Damn. Loaded question, Paul. Thanks for getting this kicked off of iTunes. <laughs> Shit. Um, this is actually a topic that I am very, very interested in. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I don't talk about it on the podcast, obviously, because it's not great discussion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I follow this type of stuff pretty, <clears throat> pretty closely. Yes, you do. Um, I think a lot of it is just so. There's a new term that's been coming out. It's called social currency, right? Yes. And taking part in uh, the oppression Olympics is basically who can be, in my eyes, it looks like who can be the uh, person who is oppressed or the person who is offended more. Because when that happens, you can get a flood of people coming to your side, which then ups your social currency, which then also makes you feel better because people are agreeing with you. Yes. Right? There are. I feel that there are a lot of things that probably shouldn't be considered offensive uh especially things so in canada there was a a pretty big incident at wilford laurier university Mm -hmm. where a student uh was i believe it was a debate class uh or no it was a linguistics class and she brought up how uh certain words can be construed by other people and the importance of language and in doing so she brought up uh videos i believe by uh pretty infamous people uh jordan peterson and ben shapiro and in doing so apparently someone had reported her in the class like they they made an anonymous complaint she's a ta uh and she was brought in before a board of educators a board of her almost peers and they kind of reprimanded her about using this uh this information or this teaching style yeah and it turns out that Nobody actually reported her. They used that, the teachers used that report because they wanted, they didn't like that she was using these people and they wanted to like push a certain sort of agenda. And the only reason we know this 
is because she recorded the whole conversation in oh. secret. Um, so there is a lot of shady shit like that happening, which leads me to believe that I don't think people are as offended as they actually seem to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just that you can get popular on the internet by pointing out something offensive. Mm. Uh, a good example is most recently Twitter caught fire because someone had unearthed a Playboy interview with John Wayne, um, where he he said, I think it was um, something, I'm paraphrasing, I don't remember the exact quote. It was like something along the lines of like, I'll believe in black independence as soon as they can like hold a job or something. Like yeah. some really heinous shit, yeah. right? <clears throat> and they're like, I can't believe this fucking dead guy said this in an interview. We oh should, yeah, I remember this going on. We yeah. should boycott everything. And the thing is, is like, dude, he was born in the 1900s, literally the 1900s. Like I think he was born in 1906. Yeah, that was the culture at the time. Yeah, like you think that this guy isn't going to have some fucking controversial yeah. opinions like what yeah. do you think is gonna happen right yeah. also he's fucking dead yeah so yeah like and and those situations like i don't think I don't, like i don't think what you're trying to say is you're trying to justify his actions but like that is what the world was yeah no you're not justifying that act like when i talked l- listen my nana bless her soul yeah right <laughs> racist motherfucker she fucking racist ass <laughs> Italian, all right? Like she was all like, "Yo, Anthony, I need you to bring home a nice yeah. Italian girl. Yeah. You gotta cook her the pasta." Oh, like she was so into her own like in her own world yeah. that one time, the only time I Nuna ever yelled at me, yeah, was when I attempted to wash the dishes mm. after a dinner. I thought I'd help out some of the other people uh, in my family by helping wash the dishes. She fucking yelled at me. Yeah. And she's like, that is not man's work. That is a woman's job to yeah. do. Get the fuck out of it. Like, she was mad. Yeah. Right? Like, that's just the way people were wired back then. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I gotta cut you off. But, like, yeah, I'm not justifying their actions. But it's definitely... I don't think people are getting as offended. Like... It's tough. It's it's tough to say because, you know... <clears throat> like, I'm... I don't know. I, I, I guess I could see both ends. Like, yeah, definitely some people are there to take advantage. Mm-hmm. But I think, th- but there's also people out there who genuinely believe they're doing the right thing, even if it's not necessarily the right thing. Yeah. You know, it's it's almost in terrible. No, perfect example. It's like religion, right? Yep. Like, people will do anything for faith. And whether or not, and I'm not pointing out any religions, I'm just saying, like... Are you pointing out my religion specifically? Or, I'm <laughs> fucking triggered. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's my goal. It's like, if you... If you genuinely believe something, you will be led to making those types of assumptions or or actions that may not be perceived as acceptable. Yeah. Right? Or you're maybe going overboard. It's tough to draw that line though, because like if someone truly believes what that they what they and what they're saying, who am I to tell them otherwise? Right? The, who are you to tell them otherwise in a regular Scenario, yeah, that's right? what I mean. Like that's the thing. Like me and you, we fuck around about race yeah. all the time. Yeah. Right. If you can't hear it through our voices, <laughs> I am a white male, and Vince is a Filipino male, <laughs> so he's only like half a minority. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! He's still a man. Oh. All right. Oh, that's true. If yeah. I were a woman, if you were a woman, you'd be double oppressed. Shit. You'd have that fucking social credit card just cashing shit everywhere. <laughs> um. But but the thing is is like, where was I going with this? Like uh like we fuck around with it all the time, and we can do that because we know each other. Yeah. We know we don't mean it, right? And we're just mean to each other in general. Yeah. Like this this is how we show affection. Yeah. Um. But also you you can't do that shit out in the wild. Like no. Uh, I like when when we fucking what's that uh when we call your girlfriend Ni Hao oh, Kai Lan. Ni Hao Kai Lan. I can't just go up to some rando Chinese girl on the street and be like, Yo Ni Hao Kai Lan, what's up? Ni Hao Ma. Oh, like. Yeah. You can't do that shit, right? Yeah. You obviously you got to know when to use it, yeah, and when to lose it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, but I do definitely think that s- certain people will get offended about anything. And also, this is in regular social situations, yeah. right? Like, if you step over a boundary, hopefully, yeah. the other person being reasonable will be like, "Hey, that made me uncomfortable," and you, and you also being reasonable will be, "My bad, won't happen again. I'm really sorry about that." Yeah. Obviously, it doesn't happen all the time. Countless anecdotal stories about it not happening. But especially in Canada, this is where it gets tricky, is when they make laws about it. Mm -hmm. Um, Most recently happened in BC, where 
a Supreme Court judge, I believe, like or a Supreme Court equivalent, uh, labeled it that if you do not let your, uh, what is it, your teenager uh, free reign to transition between genders using hormonal drugs and stuff, that you could be charged with child abuse. Whoa. Like, like real lawful ramifications for doing that shit. Yeah. Or uh, to a lesser extent, um, uh, quote, misgendering or dead naming somebody. Uh, for people who don't know, dead naming is that when someone transitions from gender to gender, yeah. they take on a new name, a new persona. Yeah. And dead naming them is <clears throat> like if you were to go from Vince to, I don't know, what's another female, Vanessa, yeah. right? Then I would be like, oh, hey, Vince. You'd be like, bitch, you just misgendered me. Yeah. Like you can take legal action and say that's a hate crime. Yeah. Um, Crazy. Where I think that stuff shouldn't be the case. Like yeah. I think... That if you, I am a big proponent of free speech, obviously up to a limit. Like, I don't yeah. want people being like, yo, I made child porn, it's art. Yeah. Like, that's not a thing I yeah. want. But I'm a big proponent of if someone wants to be a fucking bigot, let them be a bigot. They can live in their own world. If it becomes dangerous and they incite violence, then yes, like, let the, put them away. Mm. Right? But if they're just like out there say, saying words, like, I don't know if, obviously, I'm not in a position to where any sort of racial slur is really going to hurt me. Like, what are you going to call me a cracker? Like, oh, man, got me. Like, what the fuck? So mm -hmm. I don't know the full ramifications of those types of words that and what they have on people. But I am of the camp where, as long as it's just, like, sticks and stones. Like, as long as it's just words, like, yeah, obviously, they can hurt. But usually, as someone who's, like, bullied very severely in school mm -hmm. like words can't hurt up to a point but usually when it gets to that point it's harassment and you can take action like and lawful action against that type mm -hmm. of stuff right mm -hmm. so yeah yeah i mean it's tough um generally going back to the question do i find myself feeling more offended or feeling more like on the side of uh I guess the opposite of that what was that he said. Are, you, uh, are you are you finding yourself more offended, or are you seeing things that are more offensive? offensive. I think I'm like. I feel like that's two sides of the same coin. Yeah, that question. Yeah. I don't know. I would say I'm down the middle. Uh, okay. How about this way? Or do you feel that getting older that you are more or less offended about things, or not? Maybe not offended, but more or less like. I don't want to say cringy, but more like sensitive to that type of stuff, like. For me, when I when I was younger, like a, a thing that always gets me now is whenever people make jokes about uh, infidelity mm. or cheating or anything mm -hmm. like that, like even in movies and stuff mm -hmm. like that, like I never laugh at those because just getting older, like yeah. that stuff I don't find funny anymore. Yeah. But at no point am I going to be like, people should never make those jokes. Yeah. Right. Like, is anything like that happen for you? Uh. Hmm. Like. There are situations where I understand why someone would be offended, but I, I I'm kind of, I think I'm just so far removed from everything now that it's just like, I, I, it's more like, I understand why they would be offended, but I am just sitting here like, okay, that's a thing that happened. Mm -hmm. Like maybe it's, it's, it's actually more just me being lazy. Like I'm not putting in the effort to really look into their situation. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I don't. Yeah, I kind of just mind my own business, especially now that I, um, now that I work in Toronto and like that's way more prevalent, like on, just everywhere. Oh, really? It's so like compared to here where we live. Yeah, yeah. You like, got even be... in your old workspace compared to your new workspace. Yeah, like it's a yeah, it's totally different. Like when, like downtown Toronto, biggest city in in Canada, most multicultural city. It's you got to be on your toes for that kind of stuff all the time mm -hmm. now. Even when you're just like you know buying lunch somewhere like you'll you you will catch oh, it off i need a story like right? i need like, an anecdote yeah like i don't know it's just they're just like small things right yeah. like people give you different well you don't have to do it now yeah. even off air like yeah. it's fine i don't need you to out it on on a podcast yeah like, no so it's just like it's and i think it, it, it comes at you like a barrage now so you're just kind of like at some point i just have my headphones and i just kind of just block everything out so i, I but i think that that says something like yeah. the fact that it is barraging you to the point where you need to like nullify it somehow. Yeah. Like it's not so much like, it's not that it's, it pains me. It's just, I don't have the time to deal with it. Like, I just don't care. That can, yeah. that's a sense, that's a sense of annoyance. It's yeah. a sense, not physical pain, but yeah. it's, 
It's a thing. Yeah. Like, I, de- like definitely, I am lucky to have certain coworkers yeah. where they share my sense of humor. Uh, obviously, some of them more so than others. And so you kind of play that tightrope yeah. game, see where the edge is. And... Yeah. But, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. You, you know how I am. Yeah. I couldn't imagine working in downtown Toronto. Like, I think I'd just be bored out of my mind. Yeah. Because, like, I love, I love talking about, like... Uh, race about sexual differences and stuff like that like i love talking because it's interesting yeah. it's a very interesting topic it's something that affects all of us yeah. and we all have to live together somehow yeah like how we haven't just fucking murdered each other is kind of a miracle mm-hmm. but it's it seems like anytime you want to bring up something like that it's just like people walking on eggshells or other people just ready with like their fucking hand at their hip holster ready to be like you said something offensive gotcha bitch and then like trying to end you right you see that a lot with celebrities too where mm-hmm. they'll dig up tweets from like 10 years ago and it's just mm-hmm. like what the fuck? this is like 10 years ago it doesn't represent who i am now yeah it's completely out of context mm-hmm. i don't i don't know what you want it's even the whole thing with like uh with pewdiepie mm-hmm. like where a lot of like vox media news outlets will be like he did some she did some shit and yeah. it's like okay yeah he did some shit but also like at, for this one of this one like bad event, he also did like twelve good ones where he's donated a lot of money to charities and helped build homes and wells and whatever. Like just he helps out a lot of people with his money. Yeah, no. So I get that, but I mean, you could also there's also the argument like it's not a math equation, right? It's not like oh, you did one thing, I did twelve good things, now it evens out. Oh right? no, no, it's it's definitely it's definitely not. Yeah, but it's just where do you? Where do, you, where do you where do you draw the line for forgiveness yeah like at what point like uh, going back to john wayne like at what point do you not care anymore right where if, if you do one thing as a 17 year old let's let's say not too heinous like yeah. i don't know you said the n-word at a party and you're like oh my yeah. whatever uh at, at what point can you not come back and be like 20 years ago, this guy said the N-word in this specific instance. Yeah. Ruin his career. Ruin her career. Like, what, yeah. are you, what are you doing at that point? Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing with your life? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Just trying to get that social credit. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's... Uh, especially when it comes to college campuses or university campuses where a controversial thought is supposed to be at the forefront of your education. Yeah. Like that's where you're supposed to get all of your, uh, kind of fucked up ideas and stuff. Like you're supposed to talk that shit out so you can see where the good and the bad is. Like when people get offended at this type of shit, it just makes me look at my own brain inside my skull. Yeah. I just, I, I can't cause it's just like, why would you limit someone's speech? And if they are so totally wrong that you're just like, Oh my God, like I can't even, then as long as they're not a monster, like, why not have that discussion? Because obviously if they're saying this, they're interested in it enough to hopefully want to be educated, right? Which is not necessary to say everybody will. Yeah. But, I, but I, mm. it's also tiring, right? Yeah. Like, I can't keep telling people why going, hey, boppity boopy is, like, really offensive to Italians. Or yeah. calling them wops and shit is yeah. not great. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's tough. Like, I think definitely, yeah, it's tough, right? Like, you can't you can only educate people who want to be educated, right? Yeah. Like, if they're stuck in their ways, they're stuck in their ways. Um, I don't know. Yeah. The one thing, uh, the one thing I would like to see stop with this sort of culture mm-hmm. is anecdotal evidence being presented as fact. Yeah. Where, um. I don't know let's let's get real dark mm-hmm. where they talk about um like abusers like yeah. relationship abusers or, yeah. or, or rape survivors yeah. and stuff like yeah. that where they can be like listen my one friend had this happen to her yeah and therefore blanket statement yeah right the the thing is is like it's it's really it's really hard if not impossible to take the op- opposing stance on anecdotal evidence mm. because it's a lived experience and you can't argue that if that's how you feel about your lived experience like that's not 
that's not something I can say otherwise. I can't be like, you didn't feel that. Fuck you. Yeah. Right. It's a very good conversation stopper. That's for sure. Uh, and it makes you all the more insensitive looking when you bring up like, Hey, like raping that sort of crime is the lowest it's ever been in the world's history. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I think that needs to stop because that's just a really easy way to not only be like, Hey, I'm oppressed yeah. or I live through this, but also immediately turn it around on you and be like, you have no comeback to this. Also now you're a monster. Yeah. Right. Cause it uh, elicits that emotional reaction of how could yeah. you say this to this person who lived through this? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that is kind of like one of the things I think needs to, to stop in these sort of discussions. Yeah. No, absolutely. What about like um, first-hand accounts? It's the same thing, right? Yeah. What do you mean first-hand accounts? Because like... you, your example was ex-friend lived through this. Yeah. Therefore, I feel this way. What if yeah, I yeah. positioned as I, I lived through this? That's what I or like this is what happened to me, mm. and this is the statement I'm going to make. I think it depends on what you're talking about at that point. Okay. So if you're if you're talking about like personally, like if we're talking about our two stances, uh separated from the world at whole like yeah. i think this i think this and we're yeah. just discussing it like totally valid yeah. like listen i lived through this this is what, how it affected me this yeah. is how it can affect other people because i lived through it like mm-hmm. no issue but if you're taking that solo lived experience like firsthand experience and trying to apply it as a as a blanket general then i don't think that's that's fantastic no that's because, fair yeah because it's not it's again it's not it doesn't make your point invalid, but it def- it doesn't also make it accurate, and it doesn't make it um, it doesn't make it the what is the right for society at whole. Right. Oh huh. yeah. I, you know, I can... But again, that's where like if I came at you and yeah. you were just like, Anthony, how the fuck could you think bullying is a thing? You're a fucking yeah. idiot, and yeah. I'll be like, oh well, when I was younger, some kid tried to stab me, and it was like a whole thing and whatever. Yeah. Like you. Now you're up against this inescapable fence. Yeah. You can't do that because if we were in a group of people, yeah. now you look like the asshole and we're not talking about individual experiences. Yeah. We're talking about a general concept, mm-hmm. right? Sure. Yeah. I think it's a really shitty uh, type, like tactic to use in a, in a discussion like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. I've been in, I've definitely been in those kind of conversations. It's like, well, how do I respond to this without... You can't. Yeah. You can't. Like, unless you just go just nose dive into it and and just yeah. tell them like, unless you do what i just did and be like you can't use that situation here that's a really risky move because it makes you look like an asshole yeah it just depends on how much of an asshole you're willing to look like mm-hmm. and if it's going to affect you in ways greater than just this conversation mm-hmm. absolutely right mm-hmm. it, it's it's a really interesting topic this whole like sensitive culture topic like paul like i love it but also it's it's dicey <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Yeah. There's a lot, of, a lot of little interesting aspects to it that... And there's so many subsections to yeah. it too, right? Like uh, difficulties of being a woman, difficulties of being a black man, difficulties yeah. of being transgender, gay, LGBTQA, yeah, like yeah. that whole scenario. Like it's, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Like I'll tell you... Uh, I don't know if that's relevant actually. Hmm. No, I'll leave it. That's right. Re- that's sorry. Sorry for the suspense. That's not actually relevant to what we're talking about. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. So yeah, it's just I don't know. I think we are living in a more sensitive world, especially when I look at like cinema and film and, yep. st- and stuff that's supposed to be edgy. What was it? Um, when Quentin Tarantino made Django, yeah, uh, outlets came out and called him a racist because he used the the N word so much in his movie that it's like how could a white guy write that and it's like it's a movie my dude yeah that's like going up to your literature teacher and being like you were reading huckleberry finn and said the n-word like no that's a great piece of american literature and it should be said how it like art should have freedom of expression obviously again to limits Mm -hmm. child pornography limit Mm -hmm. right torture torture limit Mm -hmm. like you have these extreme limits Mm mm-hmm but it's a pretty like cinema education i think should be pretty free of this sort of uh censorship let's say i don't, i would never take away someone's right to 
complain or mm-hmm. protest. Yeah. But if that comes in the form of taking down someone else's right to speak, mm-hmm. then that's an issue. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I like this topic a lot, but it's <laughs> it's hard to talk about without stepping on some eggshells. Absolutely. Yeah. So there you have it, Paul. Uh, we do live in a place just as sensitive as you guys. Yeah. If not more. I don't know if we're more. And but... if, if you look at laws, maybe. Yeah. Because, like, America, I think, is the only country with true freedom of speech. Yeah. Like, we have limits. Yeah. That's yeah. true. But America... Is America for a reason? America, baby, get those guns out. They, they are America for a reason, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, to answer your question, like, I'm not seeing more. Uh, I'm seeing more sensitive stuff. I'm not actually being offended. As being much. offended as much. Uh, I'm actually probably the least offended by anything I've ever been in my life. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm down the middle. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, thanks for writing in, Paul. Uh, and I think that brings us to the end of the show. Yeah. Um, next week, uh, actually, you know what? Next two weeks, I won't be here. Damn, boy. Yeah. Where is you? I'm off to Iceland for a bit. Um, I got a car. Nice. And I got a country. Ooh. So I'll, uh, be, all... I'll be driving around that place. All right, be careful. Yeah, uh, so I won't be here next week or the week after that. I'm sure Anthony will do something. I'll do something. Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll check out that YouTube live streaming. Whoa! Yeah. Fuck. You're gonna stream the podcast? Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Cause I can, yeah. I can just record audio on the. Actually, I can just post up the YouTube. No, I can just record audio. What are you talking about? You well, if I got, if I got to upload it to iTunes, right? Like, I'll, I'll record audio separately, but then for YouTube, I could just post a live stream. Why don't you just post a live stream and then just download the video and convert it to an MP3? That too. Either way. I don't know. I'm sure you'll find a way. I don't know. I was on a Humble Bundle recently, and I bought a bunch of fancy audio software. Oh, God. Kind of want to use it. What did you buy? It was like $20 for like $600 worth of audio software. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. <laughs> it's a fucking steal. Ooh. Uh, so, yeah, I have like a bunch of like super pro sound editing shit. I have a wow. bunch of audio... Uh, audio fixing stuff for specifically for video files wow get to it then yeah <laughs> i've been wanting to i've been wanting to like mess around with that kind of shit okay well i look forward to seeing what you yeah. put out probably nothing fancy oh. but <laughs> no nothing. May, maybe it's just like a new show while i'm playing apex <laughs> okay. oh, it could be could be we'll why don't see. you have uh some viewers call in oh that'd be great like if i could have some like chat like a chat box going on like maybe yeah actually i'll think about that maybe i'll post like a time that i'll be doing it yeah. on the on the facebook feed you could you never know look out look out for facebook look out for twitter i might do something yeah we'll see could be interesting yeah uh so i will see you all when it is april when the sun's out and the gun's out yo this is the end of the winter i'll be back in the spring <laughs> <laughs> all right see ya see ya